Mr. Smedhurst. Bellingham House is yours. We've always wanted a place of our own. And now you've got one, and if I may say so, a rare bargain, too. Well bought is half sold. Isn't that right, Emmy? He's had his heart set on retiring here in Newborough, and now he's happy. Aye, I'm happy. Forty years in the drapery business in Leeds is enough for one lifetime. What I want now is a little peace and comfort, and I mean to have it. Mr. Brighouse. Yes, ma'am? I've had it in mind to ask. Yes, ma'am? Oh, I know it may sound silly, but why has the house been empty for so long? If it hadn't, it would have been double the price. Now, I was asking Mr. Brighouse, dear. To appreciate this property, one requires not only money, but taste. Well, our tastes are very simple. You'd think there'd be thousands of people like us. How long ago did this Miss uh, Harkness die? Oh, about, uh, about 40 years. And nobody's lived there since? No, I, I believe not. Hmm. It's a long time. Come on. What's up? Well, houses are more than just bricks and mortar. Like, like an empty scent bottle that's been empty for years. Well, you can still smell the perfume. At least you, you fancy you can. There are no smells in this house. I've had all that tested. Oh, I shouldn't have tried. Now, don't be angry. I've got to know what's troubling you. It's nothing, Henry. Really, it's nothing. It's... No, it's just the strangeness of being in a different place, that's all. You sit right down and have a nice cup of tea. I'll tell Sarah. No, no, don't you bother, I'll tell her. Now sit down and stop worrying. We'll both have a cup of tea. I'm going to give the first order in our new home on the... That's funny. Hello? Hello? If someone's trying to be funny... No, no, no. Let me do it, dear. Let me do it. Hello? Hello? Well, who's speaking? Would you speak a little louder, please? Send for who? Well, that's the queerest thing. It was a woman's voice. It sounded very far away. What did she say? Well, I couldn't quite make out exactly, but it sounded like sin for Dr. Marsham. Miss Meadow says, will you join her in the drawing room, please, Miss? The garden, I'll take the baggage up. Oh, thank you. This way, Miss. Miss Allenby, ma'am. Good afternoon, Miss Allenby. You'll have a cup of tea. You must be famished. You know, I've never had a companion before. Oh, I've never been a companion before. Good. Then we both have a lot to learn. Now sit down, my dear. Tell me, why did you answer our advertisement? Oh, don't you think I'll, I'll Oh, be... now, now, it's not that. But you're very young, and you're very beautiful. Now, why should you want to bury yourself away with a couple of old fogies like us? I had a feeling. I felt I had to come if you'd engage me. You know, there's something very lovely about this house. 
I'm so glad I came. I'm glad too. Perhaps you're what this house needs. Youth, laughter, and gaiety. Do you believe that houses hold something of all the people who've lived in them? Of course I do, my dear. I think every woman knows that. But you'll never convince a man of it. No. I suppose to a man it's just another house. Ah. There's a bite of something left for two hungry men. This is my husband, Miss Allenby, dear, and Parson Brown. You're just a slip of a thing, aren't you? Am I? I don't think so. If you and me are going to fight about who's going to be companion to my wife, you'll have to put on some weight. <laughs> <laughs> Very idea. He really believes that retirement means idleness. Now, Miss Allenby and I have a lot to do. You've made a position for yourself, and we are going to help you to keep it up. You two girls are getting on fine, and no mistake. And uh, what is your opinion of our humble home, young lady? I love it. You'll love it still more when we've had a few parties and the place begins to liven up a bit. Mrs. Henry Smithers requests the pleasure of the company of Major and Mrs. Manning Tuthorn and friend. Dinner on the 14th at 7 o'clock. Fancy them having the courage to buy the place. Perhaps I haven't heard about it. Everyone's heard about Bellingham House. Ah, but from all accounts, the Smith has so nobody. <laughs> Please don't look so bored. I'm sorry, Aunt. I was just thinking. Well, you won't get patience by thinking. The Smithers have money. They're bound to overeat. People of their class always do. They're the doctor's best friend, my boy. Fracture, 15 guineas, uncle. Gallstones, so much to dust. Don't be disgusted. Your uncle only wants you to make the best of yourself. Well, I'm aware of what I owe to uncle. Two thousand are the best. I said I was aware of it. I only wanted to make sure our figures agreed. But then there must be so many people needing medical help which they can't get. And here we are, typing. Nonsense. We insist on your working up a respectable practice, Robin. Why couldn't I have had one of those with the new patent fasteners? All you have to do is buckle them up. It wouldn't be correct, dear. It would be comfortable. Well, I shouldn't be comfortable if you weren't correct. Besides, what would Major and Mrs. Manning Tuthorn think? They'd say I was sensible if they knew what was what. Now you know they wouldn't, dear. This new fastener's right up to date. Gentlemen are never up to date. How did we get mixed up with these two tones? Manning Tut Horn, dear. They left cards. Oh, I see. <clears throat> then what? Well, naturally, I left cards. Good, that made the score even. They're coming to see if we'll do. Do what? If we'll pass muster. And then if they find that we're presentable, they'll invite us to dinner to meet their friends. Then I suppose they'll leave cards. And so forth, and so on. And so forth. Come in, dear. Now off you go, Henry. You know, <laughs> I never knew it was such a job to be a gentleman. Come in, my dear. Excited? A little. Now that surprises me. I should have thought you'd be quite used to parties, having lived in London. Yes, but somehow tonight it's different. Your hands are trembling, dear. Oh, I'm sorry. Who's the... the friend they're bringing with them? I don't know, my dear. Someone for you. For me? My, just to make an even number at table, you know. Of course. Your hands are still trembling. Is there anything the matter? I don't know. It's as though... as though... I don't know. Major and Mrs. Manning Tuthorn and Dr. Selby. Emily, they've come. 
No need for introduction. I'd know you anywhere from my wife's description. How are you, Major? How do you do? I'm looking forward to a chat about the war. Do you think we're going to hang Kruger? I'm a soldier, sir, not a newspaper editor. Well, never mind. Every man to his trade. <laughs> uh, my nephew, Robert Selby. Uh, Dr. Robert Selby. Delighted to meet you. Thank you, sir. Come along, Mother. How very nice of you to come. My husband. Charmed. Charmed. How do you do? Our nephew. Dr. Selby. Always keep in with the doctor. <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to come upstairs and take off your thing? I've got a drop of sherry in the morning room. Mm. Doctor's orders. Sweet as a nut and soft as pigeon's milk. Oh, oh, sounds a reputable wine. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, it's rude to stare, isn't it? Oh, was I staring? Oh, no, I was. I, uh, I'm Robert. My name's Annette. Well, I like it. It's... Unusual. Yes. Not like Mary or Jane. They are usual, aren't they? Yes, perhaps so. Robert's usual. Oh, no, I like it. Do you? Yes, it's uh, manly. Not like Cecil. Or Clarence, or even Claude. Do they call you Bob? No, not very much. You see, aunt and uncle are rather starchy. I never expected to find anyone like you here. I'm Mrs. Medhurst's companion. I think I'd better go to the drawing room and see about the fire. Well, I'm very good with fires. Couldn't I help you? No, no, no. There's nothing to do. Oh, but two hands are better than one. Your sherry's waiting. Loath sherry. Hey, Robert. What's the matter with you? Moonstruck? Moonstruck? You know how people simply will gossip. It's ridiculous, of course, but they say you have a ghost. Oh, I don't think it's ridiculous. They say that about so many houses. Yes, I know. Cavaliers and monks and such like. But your ghost is Elizabeth Harkness. She was the daughter of the last owner. Quite a young girl and very attractive. Well, nobody's ever seen her, Aunt. How do they know that she was attractive? Well, really, Robert, if you prefer to tell the story yourself. <sighs> Sorry, Aunt. She was very delicate. Uh, they say that she fell in love with the young doctor who attended her. Well, they say so many things. Well, after all, the father did make the two old servants her guardians. That came out of the inquest. Inquest? Elizabeth was found dead. She'd taken an overdose of something or other. Mr. and Mrs. Abbott, the old servants, you know, they got all the money. The servants? But why? How extraordinary. Well, not really. They'd been promised it as a reward for looking after the invalid daughter in a proper manner during her lifetime. But why should she take an overdose? Oh, just an accident. It was murder. That was just gossip, Alistair. Anyway, after she died, of course, everyone said the house was haunted. There was a haunted bungalow in Jubble Paw. Ghost of a rhino. Made a shocking mess. We were discussing this house, Alistair. And that's why no one would live here. Poppycock. Really? It is poppycock. Anyone who believes in ghosts is daft. Anyway, if there is such a thing, I'm grateful to it. Save me a deal of cash. <laughs> Twaddle. Well, I wouldn't say that, you know. An aunt of mine had a place in Shropshire where the bells used to ring. And the butler while I was always bringing in whiskies and sodas. Well, there was the speaking tube, Henry. Now, they don't want to hear about that, Mother. What about the speaking tube? Oh, never mind, dear. Shall we leave the gentleman? No, you know what I mean. We've quite finished with the spirits. We'll have some more wine. <laughs> you know, there's a theory gaining ground that if you believe in something enough, you help to create it. And if you don't believe in a thing, it doesn't exist. Is that what you mean? Well, that is the inverse of the argument. No, oh, thank you. Good. Well, I do believe in a drop of good port, so... Welcome to Bellingham House. Yeah. Sugar? Thank you. And do you believe the house is haunted, Miss Allenby? 
Yes, of course. <laughs> it seems fashionable to be psychic. I suppose because the Queen has been gracious enough to listen to a few sensation mongers. More sugar? Thank you, no. Are you quite comfortable there? Yes, thank you. Good, then let's talk about something else besides ghosts. Oh, then Miss Allen, they must be careful. You must remember to keep your ghost to yourself, my child. Yes, except that I think our ghost is rather a charming one. Won't you play something for us, Annette? Yes, of course, if you wish. Oh, a pianist. Not really. I like Annette's music. Yes? Well, I always think it's better to play well or not at all. played quite that way before. Not just now, Aunt Florence. Is anything the matter? What's troubling you? I don't know. I just felt utterly frightened. But that's not like me at all. You mean when you were playing? Was it dreadful? Dreadful? Your playing? Why, it was brilliant. You know it was. But I've never played that before in my life. Well, I can hardly believe that. But it's true. The most desolate thing happened to me as I sat at the piano. It was as though, for a little while, someone else lived. Someone desperately lonely and unhappy. Oh, come now, you really mustn't be hysterical. I'm not hysterical, Dr. Selby. Yeah, we saw women were at the bottom of the sea. George! George! Right at the bottom of the sea. What on earth are you doing? What's it look as if I'm doing? Picking roses? Well, where's the radishes on the breakfast table? I can't get radishes and dig up this patch at the same time. The Lord Mayor himself couldn't do it. Well, what's the hurry with the old waste patch you've got all day? Paying orders, that's what. Orders? Yes, orders. But whose orders? Mrs. Smithers? No, the young lady, Miss Allenby. Last night she said, first thing in the morning, dig up the waste patch. Whispered it, if you please, over my shoulder. Just as I was going out the back door to go out. <laughs> you must have fancied it. Fancied it? What, in the middle of the week? I only fancy things by night. 
Hello. What's this? It's a rum go. Well, what about the radishes? You must have been there for years and years and years. Hmm. Look. Oh, go on. It's only a bit of tin, most like. Come on. Tin? No, it ain't. It, it's gold. Here, you look. It's gold locket. Well, I never. It's a gold locket, all right. It'll take a bit of cleaning. I'll clean it when I do the silver, sir. No, I'll do it, sir. That'll give me something to do. What's George doing, digging up the waste patch? He's enough on hand as it is. Yes, sir, that's what he said, sir. We are put out about it, he was. He said he was given orders, sir. Whose orders? Not mine. I'm the one to give George orders. Yes, sir. Well, come on, whose? Well, he said it was Miss Allenby, sir. What? You can bring in the coffee, Sarah. Yes, sir. Hello, Mother. Such a nice morning, dear, and the wind has died down. Oh, I do hope that doesn't mean rain. The glass is steady. <laughs> oh, you and your glass. I'll never know which of you is the greater optimist. A woman always mistrusts what she doesn't understand. Oh, that's not remarkable. Quite natural, I'd say. I don't know. There's a practical explanation for everything. It's only women who say otherwise. That's what makes them act so daft sometimes. Henry, sit down. Now, dear, what's been upsetting you? Now, I don't want you to take this wrong, Mother. No, dear. You're very fond of Annette, aren't you? Very. Aye. Why? I just wondered. You're getting very jumpy, dear. You need some exercise. Now, why don't you go and help George in the garden? Garden, eh? Yes, yeah. dear. In the garden. Thank you, dear. I'm sorry. I overslept. I had such a troubled night. Oh, did you, dear? What a shame. Oh, just jumbled dreams. Nothing very definite. Perhaps you need exercise. I walk a lot. Have you tried gardening? Oh, I don't think George would care for that. George has to do what he's told, doesn't he? Well, yes, I suppose so. You suppose so? Don't you know? I don't know anything about George or the garden. Oh, this is news to me. Henry, what is all this leading up to? All right, I'll tell you. What right have you to order George to dig up the waste patch? Well, I think there must be some mistake. I haven't even seen George. You haven't? No. One. Why on earth should I order him to do anything? It wasn't you, Mummy. Now, why don't you eat your breakfast? Of course it wasn't. George! Come in here! Come on! I'll soon settle this. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's mystery. But no. The Manning Tuttons are coming to tea. Are they? George is the last person to be muddle-headed. Uh, Dr. Selby has a new motor car. Those newfangled contraptions. Where is George? Now, why can't George wait till after break? I don't like things hanging over my head. Come in. Now then, George. Who gave you orders to dig up the waste patch? Miss Allen, was You're certain? Well, well, yes, sir. Are you certain, George? Well, it couldn't have been no one else, Mum. Where were we, George, when this happened? Outside the kitchen door, Miss. You come up behind me and whispered over my shoulder. First thing in the morning, you said, dig up the waste patch. So I did. Now, why should anyone whisper? Did you see me? Well, I can't see what's behind me, Miss. Then how do you know it was me? Oh, well... It wasn't Sarah, it wasn't the cook, it wasn't the others. Who else could it have been? Why didn't you make sure? Well, I didn't like to, sir. I was took by surprise, like. That whispering, it, it fair gave me the shivers. Now, why should Miss Allenby give you the shivers? Well, I... The fact is, you're not certain who it was, are you? Well, if it wasn't Miss Allenby, sir, who else could it have been? You better get back to your cucumbers, George. Yes. And in future, do what I tell you. Yes, sir. 
Now, I'm going to say one thing more, and then the subject's closed. Things don't happen without cause. Do you see that? Why, sir, how beautifully you've cleaned it. But that's just the trouble. I haven't touched the thing. I thought you'd been at it. What, after you telling me not to, sir? Oh, no, sir, I know my place. Then who has? Not me. Ask cook. How about cook? You never clean anything but what you've got to clean. Someone in this house is trying to upset me, but I won't be upset. Oh, no, not me. They'll try this out once too often. If you ask me, it's Miss Allenby. She's been strange ever since Dr. Selby came. Not that I blame her. If you ask me, it's none of your business. Why, Henry, you look quite wild. I am wild. And with good reason. It's come to the point where this house is no longer my own. Tell me, what's the matter, dear? That's what's the matter. Oh, it's very beautiful. Isn't it? It's lovely. May I look? You've never seen it before? No. Should I have? No, no, it's just something that George dug up in the garden. Well, I expect it meant a great deal to somebody. Aye, but someone's cleaned it since this morning. The question is, who? Oh, look. Tis thee, my dear, I do adore. And will, my dear, forevermore. It'd look well on Annette, wouldn't it, Mother? Oh, do take it, my dear. Somehow it seems right that you should wear it. I wonder... A little bee suffering. Come on. Thank you. Something is always left behind, isn't it? Yes, dear. Car's becoming quite the rage. And how well Dr. Selby looks at the wheel. Do you think so? Oh, yes, my dear. Don't you? Yes. Major and Mrs. Manning touch on them. And Dr. Selby. How do you do? How do you do? I have been looking forward to this meeting. After my exhibition of hysteria. Better now? Much better, thank you. Annette, dear, would you ring for tea? Yes, of course. Oh, no, let me. Did you uh, see us arrive? Yes, I thought it was wonderful. Uncle was in two minds about letting me have it at the first. But then someone told him that they were all the rage in Harley Street. Oh, oh. As a cavalryman, I'm against the things on principle. It isn't natural dispensing with the horse. Lots of title people have had their photographs taken in their auto cars. They're becoming the index of one's position in society. I suppose Mr. Smedhurst will retain his pony trap. We're getting too old for new ideas. Robert, where on earth's he gone to? And Miss Allenby. 
I wish he'd take the same interest in the innards of his patients. So, see, from the trembler coil, the electricity travels along the wire to the sparking plug. And by the time it reaches there, the gas in the cylinder is ready to be ignited. You do see, don't you? Well, I, I think I do. I still don't see what's wrong with a horse. Horses don't need sparking plugs, they just go. <laughs> well, don't forget, sir, you can cover 15 miles in one hour. In flat country. If ever I was in such a hurry as all that, I'd travel by train and cover 45 miles an hour. I was wondering if uh, you and Mrs. Smithers would like to come for a drive one afternoon. I'd love to take you. Well, I've, I've never been motoring before. Is it very thrilling? That is a thrill about speed. And power, it's exhilarating. Well, if you wait a moment, I'll show you. I'll start up the engine. But you'd better put your fingers in your ears. There may be a bit of a backfire. Canon Mowbray, the rector of St. Mary's, distinctly remembers the case. Well, he was very young then, of course, but his memory is perfect. You know, he was telling me only the other day that the Abbots were actually suspected of murder just because they'd inherited the poor girl's money. Oh, things nearly went very badly for them at the inquest. Strangely enough, it was the doctor's evidence that saved them. Young fella, like the same age as Robert. The Johnny who was in love with that. What was his name? Uh, um, dash it. Uh, never mind, Alistair. But I do mind, Florence. What's the use of telling half a story? I still think they had a hand in it. We don't know what's gone on here. I'd be more concerned about what happened in this house in the past if it made the doors rattle or the roof leak or stopped up the drain, but it hasn't. Hasn't even made the gas explode. <gasps> Cannon Brigade! Enjoying it? Loving it. I could go on for miles. To... to land then. Or Gretna Green? I might say yes. Let's make it Gretna Green. Is the pace too much for you? No. Faster still, if you like. doing pretty well already. About eight miles an hour, I should say. As much as that? Well, she's running very smoothly. Is she? Oh, yes, she's beautifully sprung. Much quieter than the early models. Oh, is she? May I steer? It's a bit tricky. I'll guide you. consulted my diary for 1860, and I find it's 40 years ago tomorrow since poor Miss Harkness was found dead in her bed. Remarkable, isn't it? Astounding! It caused a great deal of talk at the time. I remember we used to come over for the and cricket then, uh, festival. We've always loved the new for and loved it. Pleasant to see this house alive again. It's always seemed so dead. When I passed it, I used to shiver. There's a lot of nonsense talked about Bellingham House. There's only one way to deal with nonsense. Good afternoon. Ignore it. And I've been so much happier since Annette came. Of course, we've always been intent on a place of our own. If only our own children had been spared. Speaking as man whose quiver is not only full, but uh, overflowing. John, don't be delicate. Regrets, darling. You are quite sure, aren't you? Yes, Robert. Quite, quite sure. It won't be all Harley Street at first, you know. 
been married to a provincial sawbones. I don't want Harley Street at any time. I just want you here in Newborough. Oh, bless you, darling. Because that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> then you shall hear it. Three times a day, every day from now. There you are. Oh, do come along. He's just going to announce it. Oh, oh. Now, come along. This concerns you, too, you know. <laughs> My friends, this is to me just as it would have been if our own two children had been spared to us. Both a happy and a sad occasion. As you grow older, you learn one thing. Every house needs young people. It's lonely without them. You can. Pause to reflect on this. Me. As they make their Give over, can't you? Life. How can I hear him speaking when you keep your pin? Uh, but what's he say? What's he say? Uh, what's he say? Shh. So, when Annette came to us, we began to forget we were lonely. We began to forget we were old. And the house forgot it was dead. <laughs> We've grown to love her. And now we must hand her over to someone who has a better right to her. I refer to Dr. Robert Selby. <laughs> Bob needs no introduction. You knew him before I did. That's your good fortune. <laughs> it's not so much that we are losing Annette as that we are gaining Roberts. And now it only remains for me to announce their engagement and to wish them long life, prosperity, and sunshine all their days. <laughs> That's a weather impact on the way it goes to happen in a minute. <laughs> now run along indoors before it starts coming down. Surgery, darling. Why are you so worried? I'm not really. It, it's nothing. Oh, why did our party have to end like this? It's only a passing storm, darling. Clouds can't hurt us. I'll try and remember that. Whatever happens. Nothing's going to happen. Tis thee, my dear, that I do adore. And will, my dear, forevermore. The sun will be shining tomorrow for our drive. That's right, yeah. Goodbye, darling. and bred in these parts and I've never known a storm last this long and that's a fact uh, they always give me a headache I wonder you don't go to bed what and not know what's going on in my kitchen don't forget I'm here that's just what I mean ask her if she was ever young once that is if she can remember that far back go on ask her I can't remember when I've eaten a nicer bit of pie I can't remember when I've eaten a nicer bit of pie. Do you never do anything but eat? 
Well, they say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. That's always provided he's got a heart. Damn that storm. No, 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 temper. Well, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of this house, too. And then what's come over the master and missus ever since we've been here? All them tales about the place being haunted. Even the butcher's boy says he doesn't know when he's going to come here and find us all done to death. It is natural. <laughs> Take no notice. Ain't you going to answer it? I heard what happened once before. Well, you're all right now. You've got the law on your side. <laughs> it's about time I was off to meet the sergeant. I'm late as it is. I must be off now. Oh, no, you won't. You deserve the VC, both of you. Yes. Cook here. Yes, sir. I'll see to it, sir. Your ghost's name... I never said it was a ghost. ...is Mr. Smedhurst. Now, off to bed you go. Have a good night's sleep and come down to breakfast with some colour in your cheeks, eh, Mother? I'd like to thank you both, but today... It, it's been the most what? Good night. Once come over here. The first night of our engagement, I... I just cried and cried. Silly old goose.
Nothing to worry about. I can't hear. Do what? Send for Dr. Marshall. Now try to think of it as though it were nothing but a bad dream. That's all it was. A bad dream. But say it as though you believed it. Do you believe it? Well, what else could it have been? You're not ill. It must have been a nightmare brought on by that thunderstorm. Now, mustn't it? Yes, dear. Now, you'll get a nice rest, and then you'll feel as right as rain. As right as rain. Good. Well, I'll be back this afternoon. Robert. Hmm? Thank you. Bless you, dear. If you want to lift into the town. Right. Now just lean back and be comfy, dear. You're being very good to me. Oh, don't talk such nonsense. I wonder if you should. Why, you're like one of our own. Not anymore. Annette. Can't you tell me what's troubling you? Ah. Uh, last night, there was music and then voices. Dreadful voices. They frightened me. In your dream, dear. A sort of dream. There was a suffocating feeling and then I knew. Knew what? But here, in my heart, there was someone else. Not me. Oh, don't leave me. Please don't leave me. Of course I won't leave you. Oh, no, no, no. There, there. You must go now. Dr. Marsham ordered me to rest, and I shall. I must be careful not to overtax my strength. He thinks so much of me. So very much. It's impossible to tell you at first hand. I was only just born then. My father was head of this firm, and he's been dead seven years. But you must have heard about Bellingham House. Good gracious man, everyone in the district seems to have been talking about it. I listened to every bit of malicious gossip. I'd never sell so much as a hen roost. Now, Doctor, you tell me something. Do you believe in ghosts? Certainly not. You're a cleverer man than I am, and if you don't, why should I? Someone must have believed in them. That's why was the property so cheap. Hang it all, sir. You even try to get it cheaper. Ah, uh -huh. that's only because I'm a businessman. And do you believe in ghosts? No, I do not. But supposing, and mind you, I say supposing there were such things, what sort of a ghost would you say ours was? Well, I only know what I've heard. All right, what have you heard? That the, the ghost is supposed to be that of Miss Elizabeth Harkness. Her father owned Bellingham House. She was an invalid, I believe. They say she was made to be an invalid by her father. Jealousy over devotion, call it what you like, he shut her away. In Bellingham House? Yes, so they say. After the father died, the young lady lived on in the house. 
With the housekeeper and her husband. Mr. and Mrs. Abbott. Was she an invalid all the time? I understand, sir. Attended by a doctor? I imagine so. His name? Can't say. I don't remember hearing it. I'm informed that it is exactly 40 years ago this very morning that Miss Elizabeth Harkness was found dead in her bed. 40 years ago this morning? Take it easy. You're all right. You don't believe in ghosts. I don't see why I should be cross-examined like this. You sold me a piece of property which hasn't turned out very well. Nothing I can put my finger on yet, but uh, I'm just wondering if you've been holding something back. If, and mind you, I say if I believed in ghosts, there might be something that I could conceivably be holding back. But I don't believe in ghosts. And you don't believe in ghosts. I've told you already. And you, Dr. Selby, don't believe in ghosts either, do you? No, I don't believe in ghosts either. In effect, the reason that you've got Bellingham House at such a bargain is there are a lot of foolish people who do believe in ghosts. Good day, gentlemen. That chubber took the tail off a manx cat. What I need now is a breath of fresh air, a deep one. The whole thing's got me rattled, Bob. It's not only Annette. Ever since we moved in, the wife's been, well, uh, unsettled. Nothing in particular, just something about the place. You might call it atmosphere. I bought a house, not atmosphere. We're learning more every day about the effects of change on the nerve centers. It may be not only change of place, but change of circumstances. Perhaps you and Mrs. Smethurst are missing the business. I wonder if you're right. We've worked all our lives with one object, to have a home of our own. I wonder if we really wanted it, or if it was just imagination. Possible. But how can that explain Annette? How do you explain her? I can't. Excuse me, but you're Mr. Smedhurst, aren't you? I am, madam. A Bellingham house. Nice place. So romantic, as they say. Is it really haunted? No, it is not. Oh, well, I don't suppose you'd admit it, even if it was in front of Mr. Selby here, him being a doctor. Doctors don't like ghosts, because they're the patients who've slipped through their fingers. <laughs> it's unhealthy to take seriously what's really morbid superstition. Afraid to believe? Certainly not. In fact, madam, it's a lot of twaddle. My house is not haunted and never has been. I wouldn't say that exactly. Tell the gentleman, Mr. Perkins, tell him about Bellingham House. Oh. Oh. Well, um, I'm editor and manager of the Gazette. Have been now for over 40 years. Yes. Well, now, uh, Coots and uh, Brick House have advertised your property in my paper at regular intervals. Oh, and what a valuable bit of property that ad was. Eh? Don't you see? As long as the house was haunted, nobody bought it. <laughs> and as long as nobody bought it, Brick House advertised it. So if anybody asks me if I believe in ghosts, I say, yes, certainly, of course I do. <laughs> do you mean to say you've kept the superstition alive? <laughs> well, I've always done my best. You wicked old fraud, and I thought you meant it. Yeah, but it isn't only me, Rosie. Why, the whole population of the town believed it for years. Why, you know yourself, you've heard them, haven't you, with their tales about whistles being blown in the night and a piano being played in an empty house. <laughs> Nightly, isn't it? <laughs> yes, isn't it? The things people will believe. Wait a minute. There's one thing I'd like to know. Mr. Perkins, you remember Miss Elizabeth Harkness? Oh, yeah. I've never met her, you know. She was very retiring. Used to spend her time playing the piano, which she did extraordinarily well, I'm told. Yes, but you'll probably remember the inquest. Inquest? Was there an inquest? I... Yeah, oh, of course there was. <laughs> I, I reported it, didn't I? Yeah, oh, what a feast for the scandalmongers. Mr. and Mrs. Abbott getting all the money. The whole town said they'd murdered her. Uh -huh. But they couldn't upset the doctor's evidence. No, heart failed her in her sleep. Overdose of veronal. Can you remember the name of that doctor? Do yes, yes, of course I can. I, um, nice young fellow, good looking, something like yourself. Yes, but what uh, was his name? His name. Um, hmm, well, good gracious me, his name. 
An extraordinary thing. I can see him right in front of me. I... Oh, Dr. Marsham. <laughs> Send for Dr. Henry. You know, this house is haunted. Yes, I know. I'm glad you know. I've been hoping that you'd give up fighting against it. Because I know I'm just going to begin fighting. I'll protect my own and no power on earth is going to stop me. How's that it? I don't know. You don't know? I understood she was going to stay in bed and sleep. She's still in bed asleep. Well, why say? Bob Selby's worried about her. He says there's nothing really wrong. If the thunderstorm had upset her, he'd know what was the matter. Somehow, since last night, she's been so... so different. Harry, she... she's so strange. And though I wait for thee a thousand years, through waiting will I love thee yet the more. And though I fill an ocean with my tears, my joy will thus be greater than before. And this, my prayer forevermore will be, that in the end, thou wilt come back to me. Why did I say that? I've never heard it before. I've never read it anywhere. I don't know where it came from. Who are you who always stand behind me, trying to push me out of the way? I'm Annette Allenby. I love Robert Selby. You can't take that away from me. You shan't! Oh, why? Oh, why don't you leave me alone? Annette. Annette. Send me away. I'm just a nuisance to you. You'd be so much happier without me. We'll never send you away. Why am I so frightened? We've bought this house and all that goes with it. What's left to us of our lives is wrapped up in it. But it's our responsibility. And if there's anything that this house owes to anyone, living or dead, we shall pay, as we've always paid our debts. But if this house robs us of something that we love, then we shall destroy it, brick by brick, until there is nothing left but the weeds and memories. What do you say about it, matey? Are there such things as ghosts, or am I daft like a lot of other folk? <clears throat> eh? What about it? You don't think I'm daft. Well, that's a comfort. I respect your opinion. If I've got to give up this place, it'll mean we'll be laughed at. I wouldn't like that. Neither would you. Hello, Mother.
What's to do? I'm afraid I'm not quite as strong as I imagined I was. I thought I could do it. Perhaps I've succeeded. We'll just have to wait and see. Something to do with Annette. Uh, now, Henry, don't think I'm silly. I've just been talking to Miss Elizabeth Harkness. She won't leave Annette alone. There are times now when she is Annette. Now, wait a minute. You don't want to lose a sense of proportion over this. No, I'm not. You know how you've always trusted in my instinct. For years in the business, whenever I've said buy this or buy that, or reduce prices or have a clearance sale, and I've been right, haven't I? Yes, Mother, you have. I... And I'm right about this, too. We're going to lose, Annette. If we don't watch out. We ought to send her away. It'll be kind. Get Bob to take her right away. At least until this ghost business is settled. No. No, that's no remedy. We took on something with this house that we didn't bargain for. And it's got to be put right here. Then let's put it right. I'll do my best. But Henry... If I fail, I want you to promise me one thing. That you'll have this house demolished brick by brick. Now. Until nothing remains. Now, wait a minute. As long as this house stands, Elizabeth Harkness must wait here to fulfill her destiny. And there'll be nothing but unhappiness for those who live in it. No, Mother, I'll make no such promise. I'm hanged if I'll be dictated to by a woman who's been dead 40 years. Once and for all, no. Very well, then. Is she asleep? I. Uh, That's the best thing for her. Plenty of rest. Uh, it's no good, Mother. I'll not give in. Why hasn't he been to see me? Why hasn't who been? You know who I mean. You've told him not to come anymore. I haven't. I don't know what you're talking about. It must have been you. It couldn't have been Mrs. Abbott. She has orders to admit him at all hours. She wouldn't have dared. Oh, just sit down and rest and we'll find out why he hasn't come. Oh, no. No, you can't strap me to a chair again. I won't allow it. Father isn't here now to make you do it. He's dead, so he can't. Well, send for Robert Selby at No. Once. No, nobody must come but Dr. Marsham. I want him. Send for him. If I die, my money won't do you any good. I know you want me to die, but I won't. You'll have to murder me. Oh! Oh! Let me go. Let me go. You're breaking my arm. Oh! Oh! Look what you've done to my arm. Oh, send for Robert, quick. Who is it? <laughs> Did she sleep at all? It's difficult to say. She rambled a lot. How ill is she? Very ill. Hasn't Dr. Selby any idea at all what the trouble is? I'm not in the doctor's confidence. This girl's been ill in bed for the better part of a week and no one seems to know what the matter is. What does she ramble about? Nothing that makes any sense. I never listen to delirium anyway. I see. That must make everything very nice for you. She's asleep now. Thank you. Nobody's going to tell me something can't be done about it. There's no reason for it. She was perfectly well and happy. I've never seen a girl so happy. Don't be too hard on yourself, dear. I don't know what you're talking about. 
I mean about having the house pulled down. I know there's nothing you wouldn't do if you thought it would help. She might almost be one of our own girls. I... And we'll save her, Henry. If she's to be saved. Just don't lose faith, dear. I'll try not to. Excuse me, Mum. Yes, Sarah. The doctor's up there now. Oh, well, when he comes down, ask him in here. Yes, Mum. Shall I clear away? Not just yet, thank you, Sarah. Yes, Mum. You knew it all the time, didn't you? About the house, I mean. I didn't know, dear. I had a feeling. I should have taken more notice. You believe that when we die, we leave behind something of ourselves. I mean, some kind of influence for good or evil. Something like that, dear, yes. And if we haven't done what we were meant to do, we can't rest until... Until it is done. Aye. Well, it is just possible, dear, isn't it? I suppose so. There's no way of disproving it. And Elizabeth Harkness died before... How is she? About the same. Have you no idea? No. There's no sign of any disease. And yet our heart's weaker. I can't understand it. It's as though she were being gradually suffocated. Much more of it that I can't. The poor young lady lying there, pale as death, the faraway look in her eyes. You can't beat me into not loving him, she said. Didn't sound like her at all. Fair made my flesh creep. Maybe the dispensary boy with the medicine. for knock next time. It's quieter. Take them right up to the room, put them down quiet and come straight down again. I don't want you hanging around. If he only knew the agony of waiting, surely he would come. Surely. Surely. Annette. There is no one now to prevent him seeing me. Nothing but his foolish pride. That at least he might sacrifice before it is too late. Why will it be too late, dearest? You can tell me, I can't you? I must sleep while I can. 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 I must sleep. While I can, I must sleep while I can. I must sleep while I can. Well, any improvement? Well, if anything, she's worse. There must be some way of finding out what's wrong with her. Well, I wish there were. I've tried everything I can possibly think of. I see. But on the whole, you're finding it an interesting case. For one who's engaged to the girl, I think your attitude's a bit too detached. Well, it's got to be, don't you understand? If... Well, if I dared to think of a... Uh... Well, 
were both a bit rattled. Well, I'm not only relying on my own opinion. I've called in two other doctors, and I persuaded Sir Roland Jarvis to come down from London. And that's all we can do, except wait. I'll answer that. Sir Roland? Hmm. Well, I'm Dr. Silvey. Ah. I'm going to take your things. Tedious journey. Fortunately, I was able to obtain a foot warmer. I'm a great believer in warm feet. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, you've instructed your cabby to wait, sir. Yes, yes. Your nerves are jumpy, Doctor. Overwork, eh? Well, I've been up for the last few nights. So have I. My nerves aren't shaky. Older man, too. Where's the patient? Oh, this way, please. Well, this is Mr. Smithhurst. He the patient? No. Well, there was every sign of a flu to have seen. But the patient's condition has deteriorated a lot in the last six Oh, this is Sir Roland Jarvis, nurse. She spoke just now. What did she say? Soon will come an end to waiting. Hmm. <clears throat> Chad. Annette, this is Sir Roland Jarvis. He's come to make you well again. So many people. Never the right one. Do you good. Oh, and stop fidgeting. You'll be ill next if you're not careful. Long time, aren't they? Think you'll do any good? Oh, he's a very clever man. Perhaps he's like a lot of us, a bit too clever. Oh, now, now, now. I'd like a word with you, gentlemen. Well, what's the verdict? I find the patient's condition precisely as described to me by Dr. Selby, sir. Symptoms may be absent, but there is striking evidence the advanced state of uh, decline. Theoretically, the girl should be dead. I don't care. Tons a ton for theory. What's the plain fact? The plain fact are that if we can't relieve this condition, it is improbable that she can survive many more hours. Right. How are you going to relieve it? Dr. Selby has already given the proper treatment. I may say that he's done precisely what I myself should have done under the circumstances. So it hasn't worked? Well, there's always a possibility that it may. A sporting chance? A chance. Well, that's not good enough, is it? Well, in the absence of any cause for this condition, I'll I tell you the cause. This house is haunted. <laughs> My dear Mr. Smithhurst, every house is haunted. If you have to believe popular rumor, our very highways are congested with the spirits of the departed. We make our own ghosts, sir. They are the figments of our imagination. Oh, they are, are they? Undoubtedly. Ask any busy man if he believes in ghosts. I have. I'm a busy man, and I've asked myself, and I'm not very satisfied with the answer. My dear sir. You were a busy man. I wager you'd have no time for such nonsense before you retired. Surely all this has nothing to do with Annette. We've got to find out what's really wrong with her. You're by no means certain of all the causes of infection. Toxicology, Mr. Smithhurst, bristles with unknown paths. Good day to you, sir. Good day. No, 
nonsense, is it? We'll see. It's all right. You've got nothing to lose by talking. I've bought the place. That's all there is to it. I don't care if I give it away or have it blown up by dynamite. You won't have to give me my money back for it. All I want from you is talk. You had plenty of it when you are trying to make a deal. Well, come on. But I keep telling you, sir, it's nothing but local gossip, uh, servants, postmen and the like, and the occasional long-haired gent from London. There's nothing you can put your finger on. I'm the best judge of that. Your father picked up Bellingham House for a song. Well, I wouldn't say that. Well, he ought to have done. It took 40 years to find a mug like me. How many times did you nearly sell it? Oh, several times. What put him off? Nothing, really. Come on, out with it. We had a little trouble with the speaking tubes. Little trouble, the speaking tubes. Why didn't you have them taken out? We didn't like to. Dare. And you don't believe in ghosts? No, certainly not. What a liar you are. Oh, yes, yes, I remember the Abbots perfectly well. After they left the district, where did they go? Well, they started to go quite a long way, but uh, they didn't get very far, if you know what I mean. What happened? Well, uh, they uh, realized the estate as quick as maybe, and then took ship for America, going to settle down there, you know. But uh, in a manner of speaking, the ship settled down instead, you know. Uh, there were only a handful of survivors, and they didn't include Mr. and Mrs. Abbott. So the young lady's money didn't do them any good? Well, no, I suppose not, <laughs> if you look at it in that way. I do look at it that way. Uh, this uh, Dr. Marsham, do you remember anything about him? No, oh, very little. He was the sort of young gentleman who kept himself to himself. Uh -huh. Rumor went about that he was in love with Miss Harkness, but didn't dare mention it to her. Why not, indeed? Well, it's understandable in a way. First of all, the father, you know. He was a Tata. And after he died, there was the, uh, the money. And the fact that Marsham was a doctor and she was his patient. <laughs> etiquette, you know. <laughs> Funny thing, etiquette never bothered me much. And after Miss Harkness died, what happened to Dr. Marsham? He sold his practice and left the neighborhood. Yes, people said that he had a broken heart. Others said that he was in with Abbott and his wife and got his share of the cash. <laughs> you know how people talk. And he's never been heard of since? No, must have died years ago. Why should he? You remember him and you're not dead? Are you? Yes, that's right. Ah, I see what you mean. Yes, <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> Funny how we don't think of those things. Yes. Have another. Yes, I think I'd better, before it's too late. Same again, please, miss. Excuse me, Inspector. Mr. Smedhurst of Bellingham House. All right, show him in. Yes, sir. This way, sir. Mr. Smedhurst. How do you do, Inspector? <sighs> do you mind if I sit down? What can I do for you, sir? You can tell me where I can find Dr. Marsham. Dr. Marsham? He used to practice in this district once. Indeed, sir? How long ago? About 40 years. Well, now, why not try somebody a little more up to date? I beg your pardon. We've got some very excellent doctors in the town, sir. There's Dr. Brown, there's Dr. Robinson, there's Dr. Selby. I have a particular reason for wanting to find Dr. Marsham. Uh -huh. Do you know Dr. Marsham, sir? Uh, no, sir, I do not know him. Do you know his present or recent whereabouts? No, I don't. Do you know whether he's alive or dead? I don't know that either. And you couldn't furnish us with a description? Of course I couldn't. Oh, you don't give us much to start on. I realize that, but we've got to do something. There's a young lady ill at my house. The doctors can do nothing for her. I've even had a specialist from London, but she keeps asking for Dr. Marsham, that's all. I've got to find Dr. Marsham. Oh. I suppose you've heard the rumors about Bellingham House. Oh, I don't pay any attention to rumors, sir. Neither did I when I bought it, but I'm beginning to change my mind. I don't know what to think. Well, I'll make inquiries about Dr. Marsham, but I can't promise results. Of course you can't. If you'll do your best, that's all I have a right to ask. We haven't got a lot of time if we're going to save on it. I'm afraid we've only tonight.
been the same ever since. More like in a trance than anything else. Oh, let me help you, dear. I've made up a bed for Robert, as usual. He's still at the hospital. Oh, the poor lad. He'll be ill himself soon if he doesn't get some rest. I'm Dr. Marshall. Oh, come in, Doctor, come in. Oh, I've never been so thankful in all my life. I've prayed for this to happen. I'm afraid I've been a long time. I didn't dare to expect you at all. She's been asking for you over and over again. I had no hope of finding you. No one seemed to know where you were. I tried to hide, even from myself. One can't do that. Anyhow, thank goodness you are here at last. Yes, at last. Elizabeth. Richard. At last. Oh, how is she? There's no need to worry. She'll be quite well in the morning. I don't know what we can say, or do. I'm happy to have been of some help. Oh, won't you let me prepare a bed for you for the night? You're very kind, but I can't stay. Not now. My goodness, you are a little songbird this morning, and no mistake. Who's been giving you a lump of sugar? <laughs> I don't know. I just feel light-hearted, as if a weight had gone off my chest. That's funny. So do I. Perhaps that new doctor who came last night has done us all a bit of good. <laughs>
Annette. Robert! What's the matter? Why do you look at me like that? Because you should be very ill, darling. Should I? I feel wonderful. Do you? Well, let's make sure. Shh. But... Doctor's orders. What the Turk does he want? Excuse me, sir. It's the police, sir. Inspector Barlow, sir. Thank you, Sarah. Good morning, Inspector. Sorry to disturb you, sir. There's a little matter which I thought might be of interest. Indeed. About Dr. Marshall. Yes. Uh, we've located him for you, and he turned up last night. Oh. Yes, sir. He arrived at Newborough on 10.30 train. Dead. Dead? Yes, poor old gentleman. Our surgeon says it's a case of being too old and too worn out to go on living. Oh, I see, yeah. So I'm afraid you'll have to give up all hope of meeting the old gentleman now, sir. We've got some very excellent doctors in the town. Dr. Brown, Dr. Robinson. Dr. Selby. Uh... Yes, indeed, sir. Well, good day, sir. Good day, Inspector. But if I were to drop a hint, sir, I should give up any idea of this house being haunted. Or too old and too wise to be taken in by any twaddle of that sort. Perhaps you're right. Good, Good day, sir. Hello, Mother. Now, don't fib to me, you old fraud. What did the inspector want? It was about Dr. Marsham. We saw him here last night at half past eleven, didn't we? Yes, dear. Well, according to common sense, we couldn't have. Because at half past ten, he was dead. Well, that's only according to common sense. There are other worlds. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing about houses. You can feel the character of them. They're not just bricks and mortar. Well, it's very clever of you to have thought of that, dear. Aye. <laughs> huh? Oh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.